Hello and welcome to Pittsburgh City Council's regular meeting for Tuesday, February 19th, 2019. My name is Kim Clark Baskin and I'm your Deputy City Clerk. With us today, we have our sign language interpreter, Nick Miller. The following is a list of legislation to be introduced by Pittsburgh City Council. Councilman Ricky Burgess presents Bill number 1396. Resolution providing for the conveyance by the City of Pittsburgh of certain property having been placed for sale to adjoining property owners in conjunction with the City of Pittsburgh's side yard program. 2022 5th, 576 Blessing, 40 Carver, 526 Lincoln, 6623 Shetland, Zero Hazelwood, 737 Industry, 321 Cedarhurst, and Zero California. Bill number 1397, resolution providing for the sale of certain property acquired by the City of Pittsburgh at tax sales. 504 Lowell, 506 Lowell, 6513, 6501, 6503, and 6507 Meadow. 6824 Fifth, 27 Takume, 5011 Little, 0 Letty Hill, 3821 Wilkesboro, 1617 Brownsville, and zero Brownsville. Bill number 1398, resolution repealing items in resolutions approved on various dates, which authorize the sale of property in various wards of the city of Pittsburgh due to an incompletion of sale. 515 Lowell and 17 Curtin. Bill number 1399, Resolution providing for the filing of petitions for the sale of certain property acquired at tax sales to a City of Pittsburgh-based Community Development Corporation for the purpose of advancing the interests of the community through development. 846 East Ohio and 302 West Burgess. Councilwoman Deb Gross presents Bill Number 1415. Ordinance amending the Pittsburgh Code, Title IX, Zoning, Article I, Section 902.03, Zoning Map, and Article III, Overlay Zoning Districts, Chapter 907, Development Overlay Districts, Section 907.02, IPOD, Interim Planning Overlay District, by adding a new section 907.02.K to establish a new interim planning overlay district for the inclusionary housing interim planning overlay district. This bill is sponsored by Councilwoman Gross. Councilwoman Darlene Harris presents bill number 1400. Resolution providing that the city of Pittsburgh enter into a professional services agreement and or contracts with consultants and or service providers for professional services in connection with the civil service and MPO ETC required assessment and evaluation of public safety candidates. Cost not to exceed $160,000. Councilman Daniel Lavelle presents bill number 1401. Resolution authorizing the mayor and the director of the Department of Public Safety to enter on behalf of the city of Pittsburgh into an agreement with the National Association of State Boating Law Administration for training and certification services regarding public safety boat operations at a sum not to exceed $360,000. Councilman Corey O'Connor presents Bill number 1395, ordinance amending and supplementing the Pittsburgh Code, Title I, Administrative, Article 9, 
Boards, Commissions, and Authorities, Chapter 179A, Clean Pittsburgh Commission, Section 179A.01, Subsections A and G, 170A.02, Commission Members, Subsections A and B, 179A.03, Meetings and Chair, Subsection G, 179A.04, Powers and Duties of the Commission, Subsection D, 179A.05, Reauthorization of the Commission, and 179A.06, Effective Date to Update the Purposes, Meeting Rules, Membership, Activities, and to remove the requirement that the Commission be reauthorized. Bill number 1402, resolution authorizing the mayor and the director of the Office of Management and Budget to enter into a cooperation agreement with the Alliance for Infants and Toddlers for the shared operation and administration of the City of Pittsburgh Child Care Quality Fund for a period of two years from the opening of the fund in an amount not to exceed $2 million. Bill number 1403, resolution adopting plan revision to the City of Pittsburgh's official sewage facilities plan for UPMC Mercy Vision and Rehabilitation Hospital at UPMC Mercy, which is located at 1626 Locust Street. Bill number 1404, Resolution adopting plan revision to the City of Pittsburgh's official sewage facilities plan for proposed Grace Street residence at the intersection of Grace Street and Mann Street. Councilwoman Teresa Kell Smith presents Bill number 1405. Resolution authorizing the transfer by the City of Pittsburgh to the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania Department of Transportation of certain public right-of-way, slope easement, and temporary construction, construction easement rights on certain property of the 22nd Ward of the City of Pittsburgh to secure the right-of-way for the West Ohio Street Bridge construction project. Bill number 1406, resolution authorizing the mayor and the director of the Department of Mobility and Infrastructure of the City of Pittsburgh to apply for a grant from the Redevelopment Authority of Allegheny County Community Infrastructure and Tourism Fund to construct streetscape updates to Walnut Street in the Shadyside Neighborhoods Business District. In the event the grant is awarded, this resolution provides for an agreement and expenditures not to exceed $250,000 for this stated purpose. Bill number 1407, resolution vacating a portion of Spruce Way situated in the 6th Ward, 7th Council District of the City of Pittsburgh. Bill number 1408, resolution authorizing the Mayor and the Department of Mobility and Infrastructure, I'm sorry, Director of the Department of Public Works of the City of Pittsburgh to apply for grant funding from the Redevelopment Authority of Allegheny County Community Infrastructure and Tourism Fund to expand and redevelop Homewood Park. In the event the grant is awarded, this resolution provides for an agreement and expenditures not to exceed $250,000 for this stated purpose. Bill number 1409, resolution authorizing the mayor and the director of the Department of Public Works of the City of Pittsburgh to apply for grant funding from the Redevelopment Authority of Allegheny County's Community Infrastructure and Tourism Fund to renovate the Jefferson Recreation Center. In the event this grant is awarded, this resolution provides for an agreement and expenditures not to exceed $250,000 for this stated purpose. Bill number 1410. Resolution authorizing the Mayor and the Director of the Department of Public Works of the City of Pittsburgh to apply for grant funding 
from the Redevelopment Authority of Allegheny County's Community Infrastructure and Tourism Fund to replace the Robert E. Williams Community Center. In the event that this grant is awarded, this resolution provides for an agreement not to exceed $250,000 for this stated purpose. Bill number 1411, resolution authorizing the mayor and the director of the Department of Public Works of the City of Pittsburgh to apply for grant funding from the Redevelopment Authority of Allegheny County Community Infrastructure and Tourism Fund to renovate the Southside Park. In the event the grant is awarded, this resolution provides for an agreement and expenditures not to exceed $250,000 for this stated purpose. Bill number 1412, resolution authorizing the mayor and the director of the Department of Public Works of the City of Pittsburgh to apply for grant funding from the Redevelopment Authority of Allegheny County's Community Infrastructure and Tourism Fund to renovate Stevens School in Council District 2. In the event this grant is awarded, this resolution provides for expenditures not to exceed $250,000 for this stated purpose. And Councilman Bruce Krause presents. Bill number 1413. Communication from Kevin Paulos, Acting Director of the Office of Management and Budget, submitting acting pay approvals on behalf of the Department of Public Works for Javon Broughton, Andrew Ficarilli, Bill Maisko, Tom Samstag, Sean Trainer, and Keith Younger, per the Acting Pay Policy revised in 2008. That concludes the reading of the legislation. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. And welcome to the regular meeting of Pittsburgh City Council for today, Tuesday, February the 19th. It's 2019. And Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Reverend Burgess, Mr. Coghill, Here. Ms. Gross, Here. Mrs. Harris, Mr. Laval, Here. Mr. O'Connor, Here. Mrs. Kel Smith, Ms. Strasberger, Mr. Kraus present. Here. Six members present. All right, thank you, Madam Clerk. Now, this morning, we have some very, very special guests, both from Phillips and Westwood Elementary. We are going to stand, if you would, please. They are going to lead us in the pre uh, presentation of the Pledge of Allegiance, and then they have a presentation that they're going to make afterwards. So, are you guys ready? Ready? All right. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You did great, guys. Thank you very much. Okay. No, come on up, Cindy. Tell, tell us. Uh, a little bit about the presentation that we're going to see um, and uh, sort of clue our viewers in. Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, okay. My name is Cindy Falls, and I represent District 7 uh, from the uh, school board. And I'm Veronica Edwards, and I represent District 9. Um, again, good morning to everyone. And uh, the children are here. They're going to do a song and they're gonna do a poem. And we are here to celebrate Black History Month and the children are very excited and have been very good in the practice. So we're gonna turn it over to them and let them be the stars. So thank you very much. Dr. Luther King had a dream. Martin Luther King had a dream. For all people to be treated equally. So when you see something wrong, be strong, stand up, and say,
life you better take time in life cause you got far ways to go i was passing by my brother called to me and he said to me you better take time in life take time in life you better take time in life you better take time in life cause you got far ways to go i was passing by my brother called to me and he said to me you better take time in life Take time in life, you better take time in life, you better take time in life, cause you got far ways to go. I was passing by my brother called to me, and he said to me, you better take time in life. Take time in life, you better take time in life, you better take time in life, you do got far ways to go. Jacking? Okay. Okay. Up on you, up on you, I up on you, 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 You guys were great. I'm sure they're going to get you drinks on the way back. Um, hey, Mike, you want to close it out for us? Good morning, everybody. Good morning. As um, you may know, I've been, I work for the city of Pittsburgh Public Works for going on 31 years, but I've been doing this for going on 27 years. And we usually have guest readers at the schools that I would like to see council people come and read to the kids and tell them what experience that you, you uh, may have or what you like to do. And you know, you'd be surprised that kids would ask you a lot of questions. But my disappointment is when I do 
send guest readers um, information down, it's always that we can't do this, we can't do that, and I think that's a, that's a mistake. You know, we're all city of Pittsburgh kids at one time, and everybody read to us. And I just give like five minutes of your time just to come sit down with the kids, read to them, you know, tell them, tell them what you like to do, you know. They ask, they ask a lot of questions, especially kindergarten, because they're very, um, they want to know. And I'm just saying, um, there is a guest readers program coming up at Miller, Friday, February 22nd at 9 a.m. If you want to come, you're more than welcome. Let's call the school. But um, this is, um, I've been doing this a long time, so um, it's fun for me. But it'd be more important if you guys would just show your face just for five minutes. It would, um, it would make a whole lot of difference. Thank you for your time. Yeah, and thank you guys for being here this morning very much. Okay, so uh, that will take us into po our proclamation portion of the council meeting, of which we have no proclamations this morning, but we do have one will of council to be presented. And uh, Councilwoman Strasburger, I believe you're going to present the will of council. Mm -hmm. Why don't we? Uh, we'll, let, we'll wait one second until everybody has a chance to leave the chamber. How's that? Madam Clerk, let's just wait one second while they, I thought maybe they were going to stay behind. Okay, Madam Clerk, if you would then, please. Councilwoman Strasburger presents, whereas SEIU 32BJ is the largest union of property service workers in the U.S. with more than 163,000 members along the eastern seaboard. In western Pennsylvania, 6,400 members work as commercial office cleaners, security officers, school and university workers who fight to defend workers' rights and make our community stronger. And whereas 1532 BJ members were displaced from their jobs last year at Nova Place on the north side when building owner Farrow's properties unexpectedly replaced a 32 BJ contractor with checklist facility maintenance. And now therefore be it resolved that the Council of the City of Pittsburgh hereby denounces all illegal and unfair labor practices. We stand with 32 BJ members, our residents, the hardworking women and men of Pittsburgh, and we hereby demand that Pharaoh's Properties hires law-abiding contractors. Thank you, Madam Clerk. May I have a motion and a second, please? Second. Do we have discussion from, yes, Councilwoman, thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, no, I appreciate other council members so quickly joining, um, joining on to, and co-sponsoring this resolution I know that I, I believe all council members wanted to be a part of it um, the first to, to jump on board were um, councilwoman um, Teresa Kale Smith and, and councilman Daniel Laval and um, I know that there were others that attended a rally at Nova Place last Friday um, I was not able to be there personally but I know other council members were present this is this is um, Obviously, just standing with the fifth, not only the 15 32 BJ members who were displaced from their jobs at Nova Place, but you know, um, those who are serv in the service industry in general who are um, doing doing hard, you know good work every day and deserve to be paid a fair wage and have fair benefits. And um, you know, in this case, there were files charges 
charges filed with the neighbor, National Labor Relations Board and the NLRB issued a complaint against the, the check this checklist facility maintenance after finding evidence that they f actually did violate federal law. So this was um, a real grievance that was it should be taken seriously and all these um, members want is to get their jobs back and to um, make a fair wage. So that's where we're, why we're standing Great. in solidarity with them. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, and all members have signed on. Councilwoman yeah, Gross. I just wanted to make sure that my office got back to you and I, I am happy to co-sponsor. Thank, thank you, you. For, for bringing it forward. Yeah, thank you. Thanks everyone. With no further discussion then, all in favor, aye. 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 Opposed abstentions, great. The Royal Council passes and then that'll take us into public comment. Anyone wishing to speak before City Council this morning, of course, has three minutes in which to do so. I would like to remind everyone here that our rules of council are clear in stating that comment is limited to matters of concern, official action, or deliberation, which are at this time, or could at another time come before this council. We do not permit profanity, and we will maintain order at all times. We ask that you would please begin by giving your name and the neighborhood in which you reside for our public record. The green light will indicate the start of your three minutes. When the yellow light comes on, you have one minute to summarize your thoughts. When the red light comes on, then your time has expired. Good morning and welcome. Good morning. My name is Dante Battles. I'm a resident of Pittsburgh's Northside area. I'm also one of the displaced workers from Northside Zenova Place. Um, I just want to start by saying the support by our elected officials is overwhelming. And on behalf of all the displaced workers from Nova Place, we appreciate how you've stood with us in the past and now. And thank you for issuing a will of counsel to let Checklist and other companies thinking of mistreating their employees know that cold-hearted actions will not be tolerated in our city. It's been seven months since we've lost our jobs and we're still struggling. Um, but for me, I don't know if I'm going to work day to day. I've gotten two part-time jobs um, that are both have me on call. And honestly, nothing replaces the work that I did at Nova Place. When I was at Nova Place, I had a guaranteed daily work and a steady paycheck, which um, you know provides the security needed to support yourself and pay your bills and things of that nature. And um, Checklist honestly just needs to abide by federal labor law. Checklist is a minority-owned contractor that is taking advantage and getting over on minority workers. And Checklist actions toward us are, are quite unfathomable. It's, um, it's pretty disheartening to know that someone who's also a minority can look at you as just another minority. And um, how can Pittsburghers take advantage of other Pittsburghers who just want to, you know, do good for themselves and help support their families and things like that? Those who have fought for justice before me are rolling over in their graves. And I am encouraged and the same strength and fortitude that African-American civil rights leaders and union workers exercised in their fight for justice before me, I will take and I'll use that same strength to continue doing so until we get our jobs back. Pharaohs should want better for their workers that maintain its facilities. Um, they play a part in this seven month saga and they too can help right this wrong. Thank you city council for doing what you can to stand with us and call out inequity. Thank you. Thank you, Dante. Thanks for being here. May we have our next speaker, please. Okay, Dr. Miller, good morning. Dr. Ronald M. Miller, Beltsuver, and Lawrenceville, Global Intelligence Society candidate for president 2020. Uh, American Physical Society member, 4 through 8 March 2019 is the APS National Meeting in Boston, Massachusetts. Anybody want to go? I and the um, CGSII GIS, both creations of mine, uh, now get the African Physics newsletter, the APN, which is about physics activities in Africa by Africans. District 6 and District 9, you have access to the APN no matter what Mr. Lavelle or Mr. Burgess do. A uh, concern of City Council is the publication of the best information at the highest level of intelligence concerning the public behavior of elected councillors and mayor, Mr. Krauss city district representatives and Mr. Peduto, is it illegal for a citizen to employ an investigator, 
to discover publicly available information about counselors and mayor, to create generalizations um, about this information, and to distribute these generalizations to the public. We think not. Um, suppose the investigator discovers evidence that a district representative, a city councilor, is having sex in his or her office in the city council area of the fifth floor of this city county building, CCB. Mr. Krause, is there anything illegal for a councilor representing District 7, 3, or any other district to have sex in her or his CCB fifth floor office? Would such a sex act be unethical? Um, an act of malfeasance which is punishable by impeachment? Is there any rule of Pittsburgh Council prohibiting dissemination of information about discovery of such a sex act in a Pittsburgh City Council office involving a counselor during Pittsburgh City public comment? Is there anything City Council or Mayor can do to legally interdict district citywide or nationwide distribution via any medium of witness testimonial, transcriptive, oral, or visual records or recordings which we seek um, of a Pittsburgh City Councilor in a CCB fifth floor office O, V, or A sex act. We have been busy. Okay. Thank you again, Dr. Miller. Uh, Celeste, good morning. Welcome. Good morning. Um, I do want to take a moment to lift up our partners in our coalition at Pittsburgh United at SEIU 32BJ. We always want to support their fight. So thank you, Corey, for coming down and doing that. Um, so my name is Celeste Scott. I'm the housing justice organizer for Pittsburgh United. And Pittsburgh is at a critical moment. Um, I just wanted to come down and go on record in support of the iPod inclusionary zoning policy that's being introduced today by Councilwoman Gross. And we have an opportunity to be a national leader, not just in terms of economic revival, but equitable development that puts people first. To be truly livable, the revitalization of Pittsburgh must lift up every neighborhood in the city. Revitalization is benefiting some, but the fabric of many low-income neighborhoods and communities of color like Homewood, Hazelwood, and the Hill District are also being torn apart. When we talk about preserving neighborhoods, what we really should be focusing on is how we're improving the quality of life for the people who live in those neighborhoods. And from that lens, preserving housing affordability is a critical issue. Um, I know that we all know that there is a housing crisis in the city, and that is very urgent. And as housing prices have soared in many places like Lawrenceville, many of us have been displaced from neighborhoods that we called home for generations. We've been pushed out and forced to relocate to second and third ring suburbs without access to amenities like transportation, health care, and healthy places to get groceries. And I know what this is like because I'm not just a housing justice organizer for Pittsburgh United, but I personally experienced this. I'm not a District 7 resident now, but I used to be. A few years ago, as Lawrenceville began to grow, I was priced out of my neighborhood. I learned firsthand that while Lawrenceville is one of the fastest growing neighborhoods in the city, the community didn't grow for everyone. Perhaps more than any other neighborhood in Pittsburgh, Lawrenceville has seen the most dramatic changes in recent years. And so I'm just here to support the Interim Planning Overlay District and to really celebrate and thank Councilwoman Gross for leading on that and um, to hope that it passes and is implemented and this is the beginning and not the end and together we can keep Pittsburgh home. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Celeste. Thanks for being here. Tag team, back again. Yep. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Crystal Jennings. <laughs> I'm speaking on behalf of Penn Plaza Support and ASHA Coalition, CJ Consulting, and also a, a contractor for P Pittsburgh United. I um, just wanted to touch on Azzy, um, piggyback off of what Celeste has said. This is a very big thing for uh, our city. Mm -hmm. um, yes, it has to start somewhere, and it's going to be started in, in um, Lawrenceville, but I'm asking the council men and women of uh, the areas of Homewood. Hazelwood Hill District to think of the minority um, communities and 
this fight, Ms. Um, Councilwoman uh, Gross, started in her district, but we need you guys to think about it in your district as well. Also, uh, Weston, um, for there's there's displacement going on all over, um, a little bit more than other neighborhoods. But in regards to Asley, we have to start somewhere. So I'm glad that we're starting and you push for this in, in your district. But we need to think about the other communities and districts that are being affected or that will be affected in the future for this Asley, because we all need to live in very good housing and hopefully it will be affordable for all because we are known as a city that is supposed to be affordable for all so i just wanted to make sure that you guys understand the concern of this and the the push for this for azzy thank you thanks crystal thanks You're for welcome. being here may we have our next speaker please okay good morning welcome my name is Alethea Sims. I can't see out of these things. President of the Coalition of Organized Residents of East Liberty. Um, I said outside in the press conference, I'll say it for the record, Councilman Gross, thank you. And I'm jealous, <laughs> very jealous. As someone who um, has watched my home community of years East Liberty become gentrified uh, watched hundreds of deeply subsidized units being replaced with market rate luxury um, sorry I don't think tax credit is all that affordable ask my neighbors I think this inclusionary zoning is great it's wonderful. I'm glad to see it's starting to happen in Pittsburgh, making it mandatory to have the developers consider affordable housing. And by affordable, I mean the people who have lost the fight for 15. No one should have to pay more than 30% of their gross income for housing but it's happening too much. Just to keep a roof over their head, if you're going to allow developers to come in and develop, yeah, make this inclusionary zoning mandatory. Make sure that Pittsburgh is America's most livable city for everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Alicia. Alethea. Alethea, thank you. Do we have uh, any further speakers this morning? Anyone else wishing to speak before City Council this morning? Okay, we'll close the public comment portion of the Council meeting. We'll go into presentation to papers. Good morning, Councilman. Good morning. Councilman Burgess, our Chair of Finance and Law. Thank you, Councilman. Thank you. Councilman Reverend Burgess presents Bill Number 1396. Resolution providing for the conveyance by the city of certain property having been placed for sale to adjourning property owners in conjunction with the city of Pittsburgh side mm -hmm. yard program items A through I 2022 fifth 576 blessing 526 Lincoln 6623 Shetland mm -hmm. zero Hazelwood 737 industry 321 Cedarhurst and zero California bill number 1397 Resolution providing for the sale of certain property acquired by the city at tax sale items A through L, 504 and 506 Laurel, 6513, 6501 and 6503, 6507 Meadow, 6824 Fifth, 27 Tecumseh, 5011 Light, 0 Lady Hill, 3821 Wilkesboro, 1617 Brownsville and 0 Brownsville. Bill number 1398. Resolution repealing items and resolutions approved on various dates, which authorizes sale of property in various wards of the city due to the incompletion of sale. Items A and B, 515 Lowell and 17 Curtin. Bill number 1399, resolution providing for the filing of petitions for the sale of certain property acquired at tax sale to a city of Pittsburgh based community development corporation for the purpose of advancing the interests of the community through redevelopment items A and B. 846 East Ohio and 302 West Burgess. 
Thank you, Madam Clerk. Councilman Coghill, our Chair of Urban Recreation. No, no new papers. Mr. Thanks, President. Councilman. Councilwoman Gross, our Chair of Land Use and Economic Development. Good morning. Mr. Mr. President, good morning. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilwoman Gross presents Bill Number 1415. Ordinance amended to Pittsburgh Code Title IX, Zoning Article I, Zoning Map and Article Three, Overlay Zoning Districts, Development Overlay Districts, and Interim Planning Overlay District by adding a new section 90702K to establish a new Interim Planning Overlay District for the Inclusionary Housing Interim Planning Overlay District. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Councilwoman Harris, our Chair of Human Resources. Thank you, Mr. Krause. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilwoman Harris presents Bill Number 1400, resolution providing that the city enter into a professional services agreement and or contract with consultants and or service providers for professional services in connection with civil service and MPOETC required assessment and evaluation of public safety candidates and providing for payment of the cost thereof not to exceed $160,000. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Councilman Lavelle, our Chair of Public Safety Services. Mr. President. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Lavelle presents Bill Number 1401, resolution authorizing the mayor and the director of the Department of Public Safety to enter on behalf of the city into an agreement with the National Association of State Boating Laws Administrators for training and certification services regarding public safety boat operations at a sum not to exceed $360,000 and providing for the payment of costs thereof. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Councilman O'Connor, our Chair of Intergovernmental Affairs. Present. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman O'Connor presents Bill Number 1395, Ordinance Amending and Supplementing the Pittsburgh Code Title I Administrative Article 9, Boards and Commissions and Authorities, Reauthorization of the Commission, and 179A06, Effective Date, to update the purposes, meeting rules, membership activities, and remove the requirement that the Commission be reauthorized. Bill Number 1402, Resolution Authorizing the Mayor and Director of the Office of Man Management and Budget to enter into a corporation agreement with the Alliance for Infants and Toddlers for the shared operation and administration of the City of Pittsburgh City Child Care Quality Fund for a period of two years from the opening of the fund in an amount not to exceed $2 million and for the payment of the cost thereof. Bill number 1403, resolution adopting plan revision to the City of Pittsburgh official sewer facilities plan for UPMC Mercy Vision and Rehabilitation Hospital at UPMC Mercy, 1626 Locust Street. Bill number 1404, resolution adopting plan revision to the City of Pittsburgh official sewer facilities plan for proposed Grace Street residence at the intersection of Grace Street and Mann Street. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Councilwoman Kel Smith, our Chair of Public Works Services. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilwoman Kale Smith presents Bill Number 1405, Resolution Authorizing the Transfer by the City to the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania Department of Transportation of certain public right-of-way, slope easement, and temporary construction easement rights on certain property of the 22nd Ward of the City to secure the right-of-way for the West Ohio Street Bridge Construction Project. Bill Number 1406, Resolution Authorizing the Mayor and the Director of the Department of Mobility and Infrastructure to apply for grant funding for the Redevelopment Authority of Allegheny County Community Infrastructure and Tourism Fund to construct streetscape updates to Walnut Street in the Shady Side Neighborhoods Business District. In the event the grant is awarded, this resolution provides for an agreement and expenditures not to exceed $250,000 for this stated purpose. Bill number 1407, resolution vacating a portion of Spruce Way situated in the 6th Ward, 7th Council District in the city. Bill number 1408, resolution authorizing the mayor and the director of the Department of Public Works of the city to apply for grant funding from the Redevelopment Authority of Allegheny County Community Infrastructure and Tourism Fund to expand and redevelop Homewood Park in the event the grant is awarded 
This resolution provides for an agreement and, its, and expenditures not to exceed $250,000. Bill number 1409. Resolution authorizing the mayor and the director of the Department of Public Works to apply for grant funding from the Redevelopment Authority of Allegheny County Community Infrastructure and Tourism Fund to renovate the Jefferson Recreation Center. In the event the grant is awarded, this resolution provides for an agreement and its expenditures not to exceed $250,000. <clears> Bill 1410, resolution authorizing the mayor and the Director of the Department of Public Works to apply for grant funding from the Redevelopment Authority of Allegheny County Community <coughs> Infrastructure and Tourism Fund to replace the Robert E. Williams Community Center. In the event the grant is awarded, this resolution provides for an agreement and expenditures not to exceed $250,000. Bill number 1411, resolution authorizing the Mayor and Director of the Department of Public Works to apply for grant funding for the Redevelopment Authority of Allegheny County Community Infrastructure and Tourism Fund to renovate the Southside Park. In the event the grant is awarded, this resolution provides for an agreement and expenditures not to exceed $250,000. Bill number 1412, resolution authorizing the Mayor and Director of the Department of Public Works to apply for grant funding from the Redevelopment Authority of Allegheny County Community Infrastructure and Tourism Fund to renovate Stevens School in Council District 2. In the event the grant is awarded, this resolution provides for an agreement and expenditures not to exceed $250,000 for this stated purpose. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Councilwoman Strasburger, our Chair of Innovation, Performance, and Asset Management. No new papers, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilwoman. The Chair has one communication. I'll need a motion to receive and file, please. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Council President Krause presents Bill Number 1413, communication from Kevin Paulus, Acting Director of the Office of Management and Budget, submitting acting pay approvals on behalf of the Department of Public Works for Javon Broughton, Andrew Fricoli, Bill Mizgo, Tom Samstag, Sean Trainer, and Keith Younger, and per the acting pay policy revised in March 2008. Thank you, Madam Clerk. I need a motion to receive and file, please. So moved. Second. Okay. Discussion? Councilwoman Harris. Motion to interview. No, this is just a communication of a pay, uh, pay grade, if I remember that bill correctly. Oh, okay. 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 Thank you. Uh, no further discussion. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Abstentions? Thank you very much. Received and filed. Uh, thank you. Our next order of business, <coughs> excuse me, that is reports of committee for final action. Councilman Burgess, our Chair of Finance and Law, begins. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Reverend Burgess presents Bill Number 1390, Report of the Committee on Finance and Law for February 13, 2019, with an affirmative recommendation. Bill Number 1307, Resolution amending Resolution 29 of 2019, providing for the issuance of a warrant in favor of Kramer, Maines, and Associate in an amount not to exceed $19,000 in full and final settlement of an action filed with the Pittsburgh Human Relations Commission and cross-filed with the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission by changing the budget year from 2018 to 2019. Bill number 1344, resolution authorizing the mayor and the Bureau of Neighborhood Empowerment to execute relevant agreement to receive grant funding from the Benter Foundation. This funding will support the Im Imagination Library Program for the city through the Dollywood Foundation, providing for an agreement and expenditures not to exceed $250,000. Bill number 1345, ordinance amending and supplementing the Pittsburgh City Code at Title II, Fiscal Article 9, Property Taxes, to include applications filed during the period of June 30th, 2017, until legislation establishing a new program has been adopted or the program is terminated. Bill number 1346, resolution authorizing issuance of a warrant in the sum of $4,565 in favor of Daniel Bendis for damage to the sidewalk and driveway of his resident at 4345 McCaslin Street. Bill number 1347, resolution providing for an agreement for payment of the city's share of the 2019 operating expenses to the Allegheny County Central Tax Collection District for a tax collection costs not to exceed $8,065.51. Bill number 
Bill number 1356, resolution amending resolution number 863 by reducing Bedford Dwellings Choice Neighborhood by $1,500 and increasing economic development and housing by $1,500. I'm sorry, $1,500,000 and increasing economic development and housing by $1,500,000. Thank you, Madam Clerk. You've heard the reading of the title of these bills under our uh, Committee of Finance and Law. Do we have further discussion on any of the bills? Okay, seeing none, the bills are now ready for final action. All in favor of the passage of the bills will vote aye when the names are called. Those opposed will vote no. And Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Reverend Burgess. Aye. Mr. Coghill. Aye. Ms. Gross. Aye. Mrs. Harris. Aye. Mr. Lavelle. Aye. Mr. O'Connor. Aye. Mrs. Kelsmith. Aye. Ms. Strasberger. Aye. Mr. Krause, President. Aye. Ayes 9, no 0. Thank you, Madam Clerk. The bills having received the legally required number of votes are finally passed. Our next committee is our Committee on Public Work <coughs> Services. Our chair is Councilwoman Teresa Kell Smith. Thank you, Mr. President. Okay, thank you, Councilwoman. Thank you, Madam Clerk. <laughs> Councilwoman Kell Smith presents Bill Number 1391, Report of the Committee on Public Works for February 13, 2019, with an affirmative recommendation. Bill Number 1354. Resolution vacating a portion of Dahlem's place in the 12th Ward, 9th Council District of the City. Bill number 1355, resolution providing for an agreement or set forth financial obligations and maintenance responsibility for the project and the pedestrian facilities with PennDOT. Local costs associated with work to be done on SR0885, ADA ramps and upgraded black traffic signal poles being constructed constructed and inspected by PennDOT and further providing for reimbursement to PennDOT to the cost estimated to be $77,707.50. Thank you, Madam Clerk. The, uh, you've heard the reading and the title of the bills under our Public Works Services Committee. Do we have further discussion on any of the bills? Okay, seeing none, the bills are now ready for final action. All in favor of the passage of the bills will vote aye when their names are called. And those opposed will vote no. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Reverend Burgess. Aye. Mr. Coghill. Aye. Ms. Gross. Aye. Mrs. Harris. Aye. Mr. Lavelle. Aye. Mr. O'Connor. Mrs. Kell Smith. Aye. Ms. Strasberger. Aye. Mr. Kraus present. Aye. Ayes Aye. nine, no zero. Thank you, Madam Clerk. The bills having received then the legally required number of votes are finally passed. Next we have our committee on land use and economic development. Our chair is Councilwoman Deborah Gross. Mr. President. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilwoman Gross presents Bill Number 1392, Report of the Committee on Land Use and Economic Development for February 13, 2019, with an affirmative recommendation. Bill Number 1351, Resolution Amending Resolution Number 503, providing for the implementation of a residential sticker parking program in the Beach View neighborhood, pursuant to Pittsburgh Code Chapter 549, so as to amend the streets and remove addresses, including in Area T. Bill number 1352, resolution amending resolution number 574, providing for the implementation of a residential sticker parking program in the Squirrel Hill neighborhood, pursuant to Pittsburgh Code Chapter 549, so as to amend the streets and remove addresses included in Area K. Bill number 1357, resolution amending resolution 532, authorizing the mayor and director of finance to enter into a contract on behalf of the city with the Pittsburgh Land Bank for administrative service for the 2018 land bank implementation at a cost not to exceed $200,000 in order to allow expenditures in 2019. Thank you, Madam Clerk. You've heard the reading and the title of the bills under our uh, Land Use and Economic Development Committee. Do we have further discussion on the bills? Uh, forgive me one second here. Councilwoman? I, um, I would like to recommit Bill 2019-1352 regarding RPP Area K okay. um, until I have further discussion with some, some of the residents of the street. Sure. Happy to do so. Second. Uh, we have a, a motion to recommit uh, Bill 1352, a request from Councilwoman Strasberger. We have a second. Do we have further discussion? Okay. Seeing none, all in favor, aye. 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 Opposed abstentions? Seeing none, uh, Councilwoman, we will commit, recommit 1352 and it will be on tomorrow's standing committee agenda. 
Thanks, Councilwoman. Uh, beyond that, is there further discussion on any of the bills under land use and economic development? Okay, seeing none, the bills are now ready for final action. All in favor of the passage of the bills will vote aye when their names are called. Those opposed will vote no. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Reverend Burgess. Aye. Mr. Coghill. Aye. Ms. Gross. Aye. Mrs. Harris. Aye. Mr. Lavelle. Aye. Mr. O'Connor. Mrs. Kel Smith. Aye. Ms. Strasberger. Aye. Mr. Cross, President. Aye. Ayes nine, no zero. Thank you, Madam Clerk. The bills having received then the legally required number of votes are finally passed. Next, we have our Committee on Urban Recreation. Our Chair is Councilman Coghill. Mr. President. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Coghill presents bill number 1393, report of the Committee on Urban Recreation for February 13, 2019, with an affirmative recommendation. Bill number 1348, resolution amending resolution number 444, in order to rename the Special Summer Food Service Trust Fund as Special Food Service Programs Trust Fund. The City's Department of Parks and Recreation now seeks to rename the Special Summer Food Service Trust Fund as Special Food Service Programs Trust Fund in order to reflect that additional food service programming is conducted throughout the school year and not merely the summer. Bill number 1349, resolution authorizing the Director of the Department of Parks and Rec and or the Director of the Department of Public Safety and Director of the Office of Management and Budget to enter into a, an agreement with individual amounts of $10,000 or less with performers, instructors, artists, referees, and persons with specialized skills in connection with the Department of Recreational and Instructional Programs and Special Event Services. Bill number 1350, resolution providing for an agreement, lease and or license agreement for the use of certain property for senior facilities for the provision of center services to seniors in an amount not to exceed $87,010 chargeable to and payable from the Seniors Community Program Trust Fund in the Department of Parks and Recreation. Okay, thank you, Madam Clerk. You've heard the reading and the title of the bills under our Urban Recreation Committee. Do we have further discussion on any of the bills? Seeing no further discussion, the bills are now ready for final action. All in favor of the passage of the bills would vote aye when their names are called. Those opposed will vote no. And Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Reverend Burgess. Aye. Mr. Coghill. Aye. Ms. Gross. Aye. Mrs. Harris. Aye. Mr. Lavelle. Aye. Mr. O'Connor. Mrs. Kel Smith. Aye. Ms. Strasberger. Aye. Mr. Krause, President. Um, thank you, Madam. Or aye. Thank you. Ayes <laughs> nine, no zero. Thank you very much. Sorry, my phone is blowing up here this morning. Uh, thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, the bills having then received the legally required number of votes are finally passed. Our final committee of the morning is our Committee on uh, Innovation, Performance, and Asset Management. Our Chair is Councilwoman Strasburger. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilwoman Strasberger presents Bill Number 1394, Report of the Committee on Innovation, Performance, and Assets Management for February 13, 2019, with an affirmative recommendation. Bill Number 1379, Resolution Providing for the Issuing of a Warrant in Favor of KMDDI in the amount of $17,902.80 over the allowable RFQ limit for changes to the design and equipment to the City Stat Room as provided to the Department of Innovation and Performance and the Department of Public Works. Thank you, Madam Clerk. You've heard the reading and the title of these bills under our Innovation, Performance, and Asset Management Committee. Do you have any further discussion on the bills? Okay, seeing none, these bills are now ready for final action. All in favor of the passage of the bills will vote aye when their names are called. Those opposed will vote no. And Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Reverend Burgess. Aye. Mr. Coghill. Aye. Ms. Gross. Aye. Mrs. Harris. Aye. Mr. Lavelle. Mr. O'Connor. Mrs. Kel Smith. Aye. Ms. Strasberger. Aye. Mr. Krause, President. Aye. Ayes nine, no zero. Thank you, Madam Clerk. The bills then having received the legally required number of votes are finally passed. The chair does have a few very brief meeting announcements. A Cablecast public hearing is scheduled today, uh, this afternoon at 1.30 p.m. It relates to Bill 1272 which relates to the naming of a section of the Three Rivers Heritage Trail after former Mayor Tom Murphy. 
Uh, then tomorrow, Wednesday, February 20th at 9.30 a.m., we are having pre-agenda interviews. Council will interview appointees to the Urban Redevelopment Authority and to the Allegheny County Authority, uh, forgive me, Allegheny County Sanitary Authority prior to Council's Standing Committee meeting. And then immediately following the interviews, of course, Council will go into its Standing Committee meeting. Then also tomorrow we have a Cablecast public hearing, which is scheduled again at 1.30 p.m. It relates to Bill 1008 as it relates to zoning changes on Larimar Avenue. Do we have anything further from members? Councilwoman uh, Gross. Right. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I just wanted to acknowledge um, this morning that I handed in the Inclusionary Zoning Interim Planning Overlay District um, legislation for Lawrenceville specifically. And earlier in my press conference, I acknowledged that here at Council, this conversation started when Councilman Lavelle submitted legislation in January of 2015. Uh, and it's February of 2019 now, but it's been a very long process with um, the Affordable Housing Task Force, um, so much citizen involvement, recommending the tools that we need citywide, our very lengthy conversations about housing for all and opportunities for all and uh, discussions and public hearings on funding sources and the creation of the Housing Opportunity Fund and so many people's uh, work on that. Um, but the, also the work that you might not have seen is the work that was happening in the Lawrenceville neighborhood specifically. So many community meetings on affordability um, going back years um, have been working, have been happening in parallel to the conversations that we've been having here. And in the last year, um, I have an extensive list in front of me of the work that Lawrenceville United has done um, uh, working with my office to do community outreach. I sent a mailing to every household in Lawrenceville. There have been three sets of giant community meetings. They've been having these discussions also at block watch committees. They did specific robocalls. They canvassed themselves door to door in Lawrenceville. So this is also a product of the work that Lawrenceville was doing themselves, that they had this kind of clarity of vision, that their, their goals really crystallized around this one of the tools in the toolbox. Um, so I just want to acknowledge that and, and thank them for their work and just to kind of fill you all in um, that this work was happening in parallel. Thank you. So congratulations, Councilwoman. I know how hard you've worked on this and it's a good day for you and uh, I personally want to congratulate you. Um, refresh my memory, does this then go to Planning Commission for review and right, recommendation? So, yeah, um, it will be on Standing Committee a week from not tomorrow and then the, it's required to hold it pending report and recommendation from the Planning Commission. Okay. So there support. will be much more public process in front of us as well that ha is happening at the official level. Yep, that's what I figured. You'll have my support. Thank you very Yeah, much. thank you, Councilwoman. Councilwoman Kel Smith. Thank you. I also want to congratulate Councilwoman Gross because she has worked really hard on this. And she was really mindful that in, in, in my conversations with her that you know what may be needed in Lawrenceville is not necessarily what's needed in the West End. Um, the Affordable Housing Trust Fund said, or Task Force realized that we have an absence of a balance of we have an overabundance of affordable housing we need some um, market rate housing in our area to stabilize our area so what may be needed for one area may not be what's best for another and so I want to so I know you really worked really really difficult on this and I and, and really listened to a lot of people and I just think that you are such an advocate for your community and they should be really really thankful for um, how you really represent them and I tell people that all the time I said they might not see her here saying some of the things that she's saying back there but she's a fighter for her community yeah. and um, really a strong advocate as is Resburn Burgess has been for this affordable housing and I think sometimes you hear people in the community you know question or challenge some of the things that um, are being said or not being done you know you don't know what can be done until you get here and and sometimes you think you're going to be a rock star and you get here and you're 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 really very quickly bought up to speed about the way things go here when you mentioned how many years this has been in the world um, when I think back, the West End Circle was a plan from 1979 and was just a, you know, done about 10 years ago. So, I mean, it takes a long time. Government is a long process. I said, I hope I see some of the things I've worked on for so many years come to fruition when it's actually um, before I actually leave for office. Well, I'm actually still alive, so <laughs> I don't have that many more years. But um, I just want to congratulate you on your work for that. I also want to thank the mayor's office and the mayor particularly for um, – working with the Women's Caucus on the um, early pre-K funding. 
And back when we first formed the Women's Caucus, we decided what, we, what was it that we wanted to work on. And everybody got their thing to work on. And this was one of the things that the Women's Caucus decided they wanted to work on. And we worked with the mayor from the very beginning. He, um, he was supportive of this, willing to work with the women. He said, you know, bring to me some of the things you want to do. He brought some ideas to the table. So I just want to thank him for, for his commitment to this. But I want to really acknowledge the work of the Women's Caucus, because this was one of the very first things that we brought to the table. Councilwoman Gross, you were very instrumental in that as well. Um, and and um, all my colleagues uh, were really, and together it shows how when we all work together, you know, eventually, you know, others put in other pieces and added to it. So, uh, you know, when we work together with the administration, it shows what we can do. I, I'll be honest with you, I have my concerns about early pre K because to really do early pre K in the city of Pittsburgh, you need $70 million, not $2 million. Um, I, I'm starting to think, and I was just telling Councilwoman Strasburger, maybe what we would be better off doing is putting that money towards, um, they have community-based uh, free child care programs you know, for, um, for infants in, in uh, places like Maine and other places where people can actually not have to worry about their children, their babies, their infants. Um, and that $2 million would actually pay for free centers. Um, in north, south, east, west, and central of the city that would pay for salary, would pay for a place. And so that would actually make a difference immediately. Um, and so I'm thinking maybe there's uh, some other ways that we should talk to the mayor and work with the mayor. Because if you look at Maine, they, in other places, they do have free community-based daycare centers, for quality daycare centers, where you don't have to worry about uh, leaving your infant um, in, in harm's way or with someone who you don't know. Uh, it, it, they're just done really right. And it's not going to cost you an arm and leg. People can actually go to work. Um, and, and helps them. So I think that there's a lot of a lot of things that we should look at. Um, just because it's the new catchphrase is you know now let's everybody worry about early pre-K. I think there's a lot of benefit to it, but there's also some responsibility on the school district's part for early pre-K. And I don't want to negate their responsibility um, and by the city of Pitt Pittsburgh um, taking up more of uh, uh, things that are outside of our purview. But at the same time. I think that this was a good thing. I'm thankful that the mayor was mayor listened. I'm thankful that he was responsive. I'm thankful that he put it forward. But I also am very grateful to the Women's Caucus and to the Council of the City of Pittsburgh for their part in all this. Thanks, Councilwoman. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your remarks. Councilwoman Gross? Yeah, if you don't mind, just a brief comment. I also acknowledge that at the press conference that it's a really good day that we're, we're, we're also um, going to see the money actually move to support child care capacity across the city because it has been my notes go back I pulled up my file yesterday I think it was October of 2014 uh, when we had that meeting we first started talking about yeah. creating a child care fund and first it was $15,000 and $250,000 and then it was just over a year ago we finally got the two million there um, so it'll be really great to see it actually get out to do the work um, in the community and we really appreciate the administration's um, work in, in figuring out how to do that. Councilwoman and I have this conversation often. You know, we we're outside the council while we're working to get here. We have one idea of what it's like to actually be here and get things done. And then when you get here, you have a, the realization of how the system really works and and how we have to learn to work within it uh, to accomplish the things that we wish to accomplish. And I think you're a great council. I think you have a good heart and a good mind, and uh, and we put forward good initiatives. It does take some time, but we're tenacious. We keep after them, and uh, and they bear fruit. And today's one of those days that that is bearing fruit, and it's a good day. And so, congratulations. I, to all I just of wanted you. to say, when I was first running for office, I remember thinking, you know, I was 50 years old. I had never been involved in politics. I hated politics. I was going to come in here and I was going to change this world and straighten this place out because, you know, we need to get all these projects done in our area. Well, I'm still working on it. I'm still working on some of the yeah. first projects I was elected to, you know, and worked on from the very from day one. I mean, the reality was really. I mean, stunning as to why everything takes yeah. so long. And when you get here, you realize. Okay, maybe I should work with my elected officials and, and understand why things are taking yeah. as long as they take well, in some cases. A lot cases. of that is just the protections that are put in place because yeah. we're the stewards of the public purse, right? Yeah. And so everything is done in a very open and transparent manner. And so that 
adds layers of bureaucracy, but they have the best of intention because we want to be open and transparent. We are the, the shepherds of the public purse, and, and so it does it does slow things down, but ultimately the protections are there for a reason. Well, and, I can uh, say this because I'm not running uh, right now. I have three years in, and I'm just going to say I think um, my colleagues do a really great job, and I think it would be best for a lot of people to sit down and have some conversations and work with people because um, if you think you're going to do something different, you're not changing the world. So let me just say, you can set the world on fire yeah. by working with people and building coalitions. Sometimes the divide and conquer theory is what people use yeah. a lot. And, and you know, sometimes you're doing more harm to your district than you are good by fighting with people that um, could actually do some things and, and work together. So I always say, if we just work together, I always I don't like that divide and conquer theory. I like yeah. people working together and coming together. So it really changed one thing you said. We are changing the world. It's just happening slower, slowly. than any of us it want it slowly, to happen. Right. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so anyway, with that, uh, if well, I, I can have like a motion the world the way it is. <laughs> to approve the minutes, I think everybody was here today. Approve the minutes, adjourn the meeting, and I'll see you back for the public hearing. Thank you. Second? All in favor, aye. Thanks.